right. So, um, so this story has a, has a lot of baggage to it because um, Robin and I, we headed across into South Australia um, after the first COVID lockdown. And uh, we got as far as Broken Hill, drove out uh, all the way across to um, near Port Piri to um, uh, the remarkable National Park. And then from there, after having camped the night, we then headed up to um, Hawker, picked up a four-wheel drive, and we're about to spend two weeks in a, uh, a real four-wheel drive heading around the Flinders. So uh, first port of call was the um, uh, Wilpina Pound. And uh, when we got to Hawker, we had to unpack our car, pack everything into the four-wheel drive, head for our drive up to uh, Wilpina Pound, uh, we, we checked in, we'd had a bit of a walk around and we're just sitting quietly uh, in our room and there was a knock on the door and the gentleman at the door said, South Australia government has just announced that the, uh, the border's closing at midnight and we're closing down the resort and you have to be gone. Um, so we had no option, we had the camping gear. We thought, well, you know, let's camp at Wilpena because they've got the, uh, the camping area, but we couldn't stay there either. So. We had to drive um, uh, and form the conga line escaping South Australia back to Broken Hill, having just driven all the way there. So it was a round trip of about a thousand Ks. But um, wow. so the, the one night that we that we uh, we got to stay, I got up at 4 a.m., drove at 40 kilometers an hour because of all the wildlife for about an hour to this spot, um, the, the famous lookout. And this is a shot taken about uh, half an hour before sunrise just with that beautiful soft light uh, running across the countryside just before the sun picks up and burns out all the colour. So this is the one and only um, panorama shot that we got, and then we are back across the border. So um, our four-wheel drive hire is still sitting in Hawker on credit, so at some stage <laughs> we're going to get back there. <laughs> so um, after that, let's have a look at the picture. So... Um, it's a, uh, I think it's about a, one, about a five or six image stitch. Um, it's shot, um, uh, I was uh, playing around, I've got, I've got a portrait lens, the Nikon 105 portrait lens, it's the most beautiful lens. Um, and uh, sharp as all get out, I think it's the sharpest lens I've got. And I was experimenting this morning on uh, shooting a landscape instead of at f9 at f 1.4 all right um, and I was doing that just because when I opened the lens right up to the 1.4 the quality of all the, the light that was coming through um, on the viewfinder was just so subtle uh, and just so far superior to uh, to everything else uh, that I'd shot at sort of f8 f9 f11 that I thought I'd persist so it's not only, um, so everything, in, it's all in focus from about the first bend in the road. And then I had to take a couple of other shots uh, because of the F1.4 just to get, um, get the foreground in focus. So it's kind of a blend of a couple of things. But um, so in, because of the really soft, subtle light, this is where the luminosity uh, mask uh, comes in. So uh, let me just open, uh, open it in camera raw. So I do control J to make another layer and I come up here to filter, camera raw filter. So um, I'll just minimize the thumbnails if I can. They're kind of in the way. I'll put them on the other side. Here we go. Put them over there. So um, when you go into the basic setting, which we have done before, you can control the highlights and you can control the shadows. And um, Photoshop's actually doing that with a luminosity mask. All right, so Photoshop's running a little algorithm saying um, everything that's brighter than um, uh, whatever it decides is, is, uh, is the brightness level uh, is a highlight and everything darker than a certain setting is a shadow. So, so when I move the, uh, the shadow slider, uh, you can see that it's not actually, it's not touching the highlights. And you can see when I move the highlight slider, it's not touching the shadows. So, so uh, Photoshop is distinguishing between um, shadows and highlights with an algorithm. 
So at the basic um, uh, understanding, that is actually a luminosity mask that it's using because luminosity is brightness. So it is applying, um, it's looking at all the pixels on the picture and it's saying everything brighter than this level, I'm gonna call a highlight. Everything uh, darker than this level, I'm gonna call a shadow. And if you tell me to brighten or darken those values, I'll brighten and darken those. But um, in this instance, mm -hmm. in, um, in Photoshop, we don't have a mid-tone, all right? We've got highlights and shadows, but we don't have a mid-tone. We've got sort of a global adjustment, which is exposure, which brightens and darkens everything, all right? So, so essentially, Photoshop <clears throat> and Lightroom, without you knowing it, when you use sliders or, um, or curves, uh, um, there's, there's algorithms written into the program which use luminosity to do that control. So, so the purpose um, of, uh, you've probably heard lots of people go nuts about luminosity masking. The reason luminosity masking is, um, uh, is something that people want to do is because they then take control of what gets brightened and what gets darkened rather than relying on the algorithm that uh, Photoshop tells you. Mm. Right? So, so, so that's, that's the basic um, uh, basic idea between, behind luminosity masks, and that is that you can control um, the appearance of the image by its brightness. So you can tell, um, so it doesn't look at color, it just looks at brightness. And if you can, can tell um, uh, the program that you want to darken or, um, or brighten a particular area of the picture based purely on its luminosity, then that gives you a lot more control in how you edit and the results that you're going to get. All right. So um, let's open another picture and we'll have a bit of a play with it and we'll see what we can do. So I, I had a bit of therapy this afternoon mm -hmm. and um, we'll just close this. And I, I created this little grid of, um, of uh, gray squares, all right? So up in the top right-hand corner, this is 15% gray. Um, these ones, and it goes 15, um, 30, 45, 60, 75, uh, 90, all right? So it's a 90% gray. And then we've got some darker grays and we've got some black, all right? So, so if I... Um, just look at, um, let me just open up here. So window, if I go to histogram, where's the histogram hiding? All right. Just disappeared. Also. Here we go. Oh, history, wrong one. <laughs> Keep going. Histogram, <laughs> got it. All right. <laughs> So you can see on the histogram, it looks pretty weird, doesn't it? Because it's just got these vertical lines that are popping up um, on the histogram. So essentially what it's, so we can actually tell uh, where they are. All right, so usually uh, the left-hand side of the histogram is black, the right-hand side of the histogram is white, uh, and you get a nice curve because you've got a, a, um, you know, a range of colors and brightnesses and those sorts of things. Um, so if I put it onto luminosity, so when you've got your histogram, you've got the choice of RGB, red, green, blue, luminosity, or the whole lot of them. Put it on colours, there's nothing there because it's black and white. But if I go to luminosity, which is a little bit easier to see, you can see that um, uh, these uh, greys, if you like, correspond with somewhere on the black to white range. Um, and... Uh, Photoshop, when it does its luminosity, does it on the basis of grayscale, right? So, it's, so for luminosity, uh, it's just looking, it's not looking at color, it's purely looking at brightness. So if I was to put a, a curve on this um, and I wanted to adjust this, uh, then I can do a general adjustment to the grays and the whites. Uh, or I can drag the, the blacks in and make them more black, more white. And you can see the effect that um, the various adjustments are having on the greys and the whites. All right. So, for instance, when I pull that one across, you can see that all these areas here have all become white. All right. So it's, it's basically said, well, everything to the right of this, uh, I want white. 
uh, and everything to the left can stay the colours and I'll brighten it. So, so I've got um, uh, some unusual things happening and seeing it just in black and white is a kind of interesting way to do it. Um, if I, uh, so let's get rid of uh, the curve layer. So if I come along here and I, um, so this will just also show people about uh, some masks. So let me just uh, move this a little bit. We'll pick a color. So let's pick a nice uh, sort of ready brown color. And I come across here and I choose a brush and I choose a, uh, yeah, a reasonable size brush. And I've got a new layer. So I'm going to um, draw my, let's make that a bit harder. Let's see a bit more of the color. So I've drawn a nice orange line through here. And I can draw another yeah, bit of orange here, make the thing a bit bigger, and I can draw some orange patterns all over my nice gray. All right. So, um, so this shows what I've done on top of my black and white gray. If I turn it off, it's gone. So um, the idea of a mask, which is uh, this guy here. So if I put a mask on what I've just drawn, I can turn the whole thing on or off, or I can control it through masking. All right, so if it's white, I see everything that, the, um, that I've done on this layer. Uh, if I invert it and make it black, it hides everything that I've done on this layer. All right. So in, um, if you think about it then, um, if, uh, if it's a black mask and it's hiding everything uh, mm -hmm. and a white mask shows everything, then if I paint some white on this black mask, I should be able to see some of the orange. So if I come across here and I choose a white brush, uh, I'll just go white anyway, choose the white there. I've got a brush. And if I uh, click uh, here with my white, suddenly um, you can see my white circle on my black mask. I can now see what's underneath. All right. Um, I can uh, then play around with these things. I can add more of them. And essentially all that's happening is that um, because I've covered the whole thing with black, as I paint it with white, it reveals what's underneath the mask. Right. So that's, that's, um, that's essentially how a mask works. All right. I can choose. So there's information there. I can then choose um, what's uh, disclosed or what's hidden by using the mask. So that's at 100%. I can also change uh, the opacity of the mask. So at the moment, the mask is at 100%. But if I wind the mask back, um, the, I'm actually changing the opacity of what it's showing. All right. It's as if it's putting a, a, a bit of a colored, uh, a bit of a gray filter over it and reduces the intensity of what I see. So that's purely by changing opacity. I can also change um, uh, what I see, I can feather, all right? So at the moment, I've got a hard edge brush. So if I change the hardness to zero and I come along here and do the same thing, you can see that it is now a soft transition. So instead of being a hard transition on the edge, I can now choose for it to be a soft transition. So that's a 0% brush. And as I dab, you can see on the, um, on the masks there. So if I, I can actually uh, show you the mask on the screen. So that shows you the outline. That shows you the mask. All right, so you can see um, as I'm, um, I'm touching with a soft brush, I get that nice soft edge. If I touch with a hard brush, I get a nice sharp edge. So I can control how I reveal uh, the mask by the sort of brush I use. So I can do uh, all sorts of things. So I can do, you know, uh, skinny, skinny lines. You know, better go back to where we are. Turn all those off. So I can do, uh, you know, little dots. I can do squ squiggly lines for where it is. So I can have a lot of fun 
with uh, with the mask and how uh, I display what's underneath. Okay, so that's that's trying to sort of break through an understanding of how masks work, all right, and also how luminosity works. So um, we can change uh, what's um, uh, the effect on the gray levels. So for instance, um, let's get rid of this. All right, so um, it's quite a, a complex area and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So once upon a time, uh, there's, two, there's a number of different ways that you can create a luminosity mask in Photoshop. Uh, the, the traditional one um, is uh, if we've got this current image, uh, we've got how it's displayed is in layers. We can also display that image in channels. So if I click on the channels uh, box up here, you can see uh, the RGB is uh, all the combinations of the red, green, and, and blue. We've got a black and white image, so that doesn't help us much. Uh, this is the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And essentially, because there's no red and green and blue, they don't do anything. Right? So, um, but the way that you would create a luminosity mask um, is that you would um, uh, you would hold the control button and you would click the RGB, and you've got this little square box uh, that picks that arrives on your hand, and that's actually made a uh, selection. And then I come down. I then click on uh, this new layer down here with that selection and it creates an alpha channel. And what, um, light what Photoshop does in creating the alpha channel is that it, it basically creates a luminosity mask telling Photoshop uh, what uh, is at gray at 50% and what, uh, what isn't gray at 50%. So you can see on the screen here that there's these little marching ants that have arrived with my alpha channel when I've done that. And it's actually highlighting uh, what is brighter than 50% gray. All right, so essentially these, these light grays are lighter than 50% gray. Um, and Photoshop has run their algorithm and with that process created an alpha channel. So if I turn the alpha channel on, turn the others off, um, uh, you can see that it's highlighted um, uh, what it's made a selection, everything that is brighter than 50% gray. And that is a luminosity mask. And I've actually told Photoshop with that little function, I want everything uh, that's brighter than 50%. If I then come along and hold uh, control shift and click it again, uh, it creates uh, another luminosity mask which is then 50% of that, all right? So you can see that the actual um, mask has changed, mm -hmm. right? You can see that the, um, the colors have changed there. And if I do that again, control shift and click on that, uh, it creates another luminosity mask, which essentially, as you can see, what's happening is that uh, alpha one has become midtones, alpha two has become um, uh, darks and alpha three, oh, sorry, brights and alpha three becomes Highlights, all right? So this is the same sort of process that happens in the background when you're moving your sliders around in, um, in, uh, in Camera Raw is that uh, Photoshop's creating these masks. So, so let's have a look at what they do, all right? So if I, um, if I control D, so if I choose the alpha channel and I come down here with the little circle, I can, I can, um, I can, select it, I can go back to layers and I can put it in a curves layer. All right. So what I've done is I've taken uh, the mask and put it in a separate layer. I've got to go back into channels and turn off the alpha mask, get rid of the red. So we're back to where we were, all these new masks we've created are down here. We've got the red, green and blue and the RGB. So we're back in layers. And then so it's got a mask saying that everything uh, brighter than 50% is going to, be, going to be masked. And you can see that these three lines which were sticking up are in the highlights and they're only 
uh, brighter than 50% gray. So if I then drag these down, you can see what the mask does. All right, so it's basically saying, well, it's only affecting things that are, uh, the biggest effect is on those things that are, that are brighter than, 50, the darker than 50%, because that's the way the mask is going back to front. Right? So, so we're actually masking by luminance, because that's what we've told Photoshop to do. If I go back into channels and I just, um, uh, maybe we get this one for the, uh, for the fun of it. And I put that one in a mask. I come across here to layers, put it in another curve layer, come back to channels, turn it off. I could have done it on the way through. So if I turn off that mask, and then if I play with this mask, let's see what this effect does. All right, so you can see that this one, I'm dragging it to the same point, and it's having a different effect on the, the greys. All right, different greys are being affected. All right. So essentially, these are luminosity masks that we've created. And um, they're a pain in the ass to create because you've got to go through this whole process. And, and what happens in um, Photoshop is you can have this thing called an action. All right, so this, so if you have a look down here, here's a um, series of actions that I've got. And what you can do is if you do something regularly, you can record um, the process that you went through, save it, and then put it in actions. All right, so a um, friend of ours, Jared Castang, um, who we did our first trip to Iceland on, um, he's graciously donated. Um, some actions, and I'm going to give you a link to some luminosity mask actions and also some sharpening actions, which we'll get to. But all these various things that we created by clicking and double clicking and everything else, they're actually duplicated here. So you can have a mask for lights, light lights, bright lights, super lights, darks, dark, and they're the, they're the different masks that you can create with that process of uh, fine tuning with Photoshop, the luminosity levels. And what you can do in, uh, so we go to layers and we'll get rid of, um, uh, well, we might just leave them there because we'll compare them. All right, we'll just turn them off. All right. So if I come to a basic mid-tone layer with my actions, I can now click on my mid-tone um, action. I come down here and I play my action and it will uh, create me um, a mask. All right. So it's put it in the top there. All right, so that's a mid-tone mask. Nice and simple, press a button and it's done. So you don't have to muck around with, with, uh, with all those things. And, and you can choose any of these. So if we go for a lights, we'll do a lights one. And we press the little button, play the button, and it creates the mask. All right. So uh, let's delete these guys. And we'll show you the effect that those masks have. And then we'll show you a nice, simple way of masking. Right. So if we click on this one, we'll delete, uh, turn that one off. So this one, I think, was the lights mask. All right. So if I come up here, uh, and there again, it's doing the same effect. So if I, I pull that, um, that gradient down, you can see it's got the biggest effect on the greys, which are closest to 50%. So it's lightening and darkening the greys. It's ha not having much impact on the blacks. It's not having much impact on the brightest ones. It's having most impact on the midtones. And then if I uh, look at this one, uh, which was, I think, with the, the darks one, uh, then it's having most effect brightening uh, the dark ones. Uh, you can see there where it's having most effect on those greys. So, everyone gone to sleep yet? That's... Uh, <laughs> so, still, I think. so let me, uh, we'll go back and we'll see practically what we can do with them, all right? So here I am with my picture of uh, the Raceback Range. Um, and we know if we don't understand anything else that um, there's some way that I could create um, a mask that looks at luminance and I've got different ones I can create. So um, if I'm looking at my image here, um, I've got some nice bright sky. I've got a nice bright um, sort of uh, mountain range in the background and it's a bit dark in the front. So um, if I uh, was just looking at this, um, if you remember, um, 
when we, we first started, one of the options I had is I could come along here with my quick selection tool. If I wanted to darken the sky, I could come along here. I could make a selection of the sky. I could come along, uh, click on my brightness and contrast. It would load that quick selection into a mask. I've got an adjustment on the side of that where I can change the brightness and I can brighten and darken the sky. All right. So that's one way I can control um, uh, luminance as I can do it manually like that. Uh, the other option is if, uh, and you've got to have a little bit of a guess here. Um, so let's have a bit of a guess that that uh, luminance is lights. Um, so we come on long, I open my actions, I click on the lights one, I play my action and the action uh, creates a uh, mask, which you can see here. So if I click on that, you can, so it's, uh, what it's what it's displaying there in black and white is the mask, all right? And if we go back to the idea that black conceals, white reveals, uh, the lighter that the gray is, the more impact it will have. Uh, the blacker it is, the least less impact it will have, all right? So I now have a mask which is gray scale because that's what, how luminosity works. Um, so if I then come along to my um, curves adjustment, I can then darken the lights, all right? And only, and only the lights. So you can see that it's darkening the lights, uh, but it's not affecting uh, the, uh, the dark tones much, all right? So because it's affecting so much of the lights, um, we've probably selected the wrong one because it's not doing just the sky, all right? So I come, I turn that one off and I come back and I say, well, let's go and have a look and see what the bright lights do. We'll run that mask. Uh, and you can see uh, with this one by comparison uh, that um, it's a lot darker and only the light grays are gonna be affected by, um, by the mask that we're using. Uh, so I've probably got a bit more of a chance that this one on its own is, uh, is gonna affect the brights better. So I come along here, I grab that one uh, and then I start adjusting the brights here. So this is probably more the impact that I was after. So you can see that uh, it is a very subtle change um, and that's what luminosity masking is all about. It's, it's about the subtlety, all right? It's not big ticket uh, changes, it's about little soft tweaks. So if I turn that um, on and off, you can see that it's just increased the saturation of uh, the colors in the background and it's just um, increased um, a little bit of the, <coughs> the contrast. So really subtle adjustment. And I think that's the lesson to be taken away from luminosity masks is that they are really subtle adjustments. They're not ones that do the big ticket thing, uh, but they're just doing some fine tuning um, of, uh, of areas which, uh, and being a lot more selective. So, so a very selective uh, sort of mask, all right? And right. you can see uh, the difference between the, two, the three masks, all right? So if I turn them all on, so uh, we'll turn that, yeah, all right, but just to show you the, uh, the difference. So the first one uh, was the one I did manually and you see it's black and white, that's it. There's no subtlety in between. Um, and uh, that's a mask, but there's no subtlety. And if we're after subtlety, we need something that's uh, got a lot more detail than just straight black and white. Uh, so uh, the option that we've ended up using, you can see the comparison. All right, where it's got all, it's, it's, it's now taking a, a clue from the landscape itself and it's giving us the subtle variations in the blacks and the whites so that we're having a more realistic impact on the image. All right, so a lot more subtle um, approach. Um, and um, that, that's essentially the process you go through with luminosity masking is that um, it is a very... Uh, uh, there's a lot of mucking around because you have to, so looking at the actions, you've got to, you know, after you've played with them a little bit, you get a, a bit of a feel as to what a light light is and what a dark dark is. So um, we haven't done a dark, so why don't we do a, a dark darks? So let's run a, a, a darks mask. And you can see um, this one up here, if I turn it on, uh, then the mask itself, um, uh, you can see what it's done. It's like a bit like a negative, isn't it? Where uh, the whiter it is, uh, the more it reveals. So all the dark areas are going to get most impacted by this mask because they're the widest areas. 
All right, so if I, uh, if I turn that off, so I'm hitting Alt when I click. So I click on the image plus Alt, and that turns the mask on and off to, for me to see what it is. So if I go to, um, to, uh, to my curves layer and I can darken just the darks or I can brighten just the darks, all right? So that, that mask is really um, something that you uh, might uh, have uh, just for some tweaking of the, of the darks. And there again, uh, it's a bit of a nuisance to do, but you can brush those effects in and out. All right, so um, very similar effects to um, the shorthand versions where you can use um, uh, highlights and shadows and play around with the image. And this just gives you uh, a very subtle um, change uh, for, uh, uh, for the rest of those little tweaks you want to do. Right. And just a question on that. You know, obviously, we do a lot of changing of skies and things using the previous method, you know, the quick selection tool. And then you've got to go around the edges and, and sort of, uh, um, you know, integrate them better or remove halos. So it would appear with lum luminosity masks that you actually don't need to do that because it is such a subtle change. Uh, well, let's have a go at something. Let's, uh, let's have a go at using one of these masks to drop a sky in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. So if I, um, uh, what shall we do? All right. Let me go to my library panels. And let me choose a pretty pink sky. Drag it across. Let me put my pretty pink sky there and click OK. And then let's, uh, so I could use the mask that we created and I can drop that on and that masks out uh, and it looks a little bit artificial, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so, so that's just using our space, black, black, and white, black and white mask. What happens if I drag the, uh, the mid-tones one on? All right, so, so what I could do um, because I can then uh, I can then uh, effectively brush out this mask is that I could say, well, I don't mind the subtle thing that it's done uh, on the sky at the back. I can change the opacity uh, of the mask. All right. So I can I can say, well, I quite like how it's done it to there, and I can I can then use what am I at seventy percent? So let's call it a seventy five. So seventy five percent value of that sort of mid-tone mask on there gives me that. I can then come along here with my brush, um, choose a black brush, um, let's crank it up with opacity and everything just so it happens nice and quickly. And clicking on the mask, I can then, um, be for brush, <coughs> make a nice big brush. I can brush out where I don't want that effect of the sky. So I can come along here and I can say, well, I don't want it on this foreground area, but I quite like how it runs down over the, over the background mountains. Mm. All right? Yeah. So how cool is that? Yeah. All right, so I can actually use a luminosity mask to blend things in. Mm. Cool? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So if I turn that on and off, you can see uh, the effect. And I... And I've, I've used, a, a, so if I then turn on the luminosity mask, mm. uh, click Alt, uh, you can see uh, where I've used it, where I haven't. All right, so I've used it, I've let it just run over the edge of the mountains. So I haven't got a hard edge right on top of the mountains. So I get that nice soft feather of the color running onto the mountains. I did a bit of a crap job blending it out down the bottom here on the left, but <laughs> <laughs> no one picked that up. Uh, but we get, uh, we get the idea. But you get the idea. All right, so, so uh, there's another tool in your repertoire for if I want uh, a subtle transition, um, that's going to give me a more realistic effect because then you're going to get the colour uh, that's going to bleed from the sky and wash onto the mountains, So, yeah. which is exactly what happens. The colour from the sky reflects on the mountains in the distance and you get that lovely subtlety. Right? Um, much, more Jim, much more realistic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in the really dark one that you went for, 
Yep. Um, I think, yeah. Are you able to, for example, the roadway where it's nice and light? Yep. Um, when you were using the curves layer, that seemed to remove some of that light um, roadway. Can you then brush that back in? Uh, it, it, it can. So, so what I what I could, for instance, let's turn this off for a second. Um, so, if if I was um, exploring all my options and I um, I came along here with my actions and I said, well, let's let's do one that's um, uh, let's just call it a darks layer to be different. Let's run the darks um, uh, luminosity mask, yeah. and if I go Alt and click. Uh, that's the luminosity mask that it's ended up with. All right. um, I can just look at that on its own and say, well, you know, I quite like what it's doing in the middle, but I don't want it anywhere else. I can then um, come along with my black brush and I can do it um, just looking uh, at the mask itself. I can say, well, let's only use uh, this bit of the mask. All right. I don't want the rest of it. So let's just brush out the mask that it's created and let's use that bit. Um, I butchered that, didn't I? Let's go. <laughs> lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'll go back here again. Uh, da -da. I call that global warming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have to do it again, Roger. Sorry. Let me get rid of that. I was too quick and hit the wrong button. Um, I'm just delete those. I want to delete the whole thing. That's right. Go to history. So Miguel is saying. Yeah, yeah go to go history. history. Yeah, but I'm just doing it nice and okay. slowly so people can watch and do everything. There's all sorts of shortcuts we need. All right. So there we are. Let's try it again. Well, let's try that one. All right. Seeing it's here, let's turn it. I'll get it eventually. Oh, there we go. All right. So I get my black brush um, and I can say, well, let's not apply it to the mountains. Let's not do it on this bit in the foreground here or that little bit through there. And I only really want to apply it uh, in there. All right. Mm -hmm. So come along. Oh, quick, turn it off, turn that mask on. And then uh, in this adjustment then, you can see that it's only applying to the bits that I've yeah. chosen for it to mask. Yeah, that's, right? that's really good. So you can be very selective, all right? So, so I, I, I reckon um, that uh, it's got more interest in doing this uh, than pure luminosity. I think being able to select the area of your photos and, and, and play around with it, I think it's got a little bit more going for it. So... Um, Take all that on board, uh, and that is the traditional way that you do uh, luminosity masking. There is now a new one available to us. So let me show you that, which is so much simpler. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I go to select up the top here, and I go to color range, um, I have a choice. Uh, let me just cancel that. I need to be looking at the picture so you can see it. So we'll just highlight that layer and I'll do the same again. Uh, I've got uh, some choices here now. So I can sample a color, but I, it also gives me an option in this, um, in this menu to sample highlights, midtones, and shadows. All right, so let's have a go. So let me sample highlights. And you can see in the little um, uh, screen that's popped up, it's the same algorithm that um, Camera Raw uses, all right? So it's decided what is a highlight and what's not a highlight. Um, but you can see that I can change that. So at the moment, look what happens when I move the slider. I can actually change what is highlights, all right? So I can actually take control and tell the computer or Photoshop, that's what I think is highlights, all right? So I can take that selection 
So you can see all the marching ants. And then I can put that in a curve layer. And how easy was that to create a luminosity mask? Mm -hmm. I can then come across to my, uh, my adjustment here. It does some pretty weird and wonderful things with the selection that we made. But, um, uh, but that is uh, that's another way to create a luminosity mask. And it's a much quicker one than mucking around with the other. All right, doing it through the select. So instead of having to go click, 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 create all your luminosity masks, you can actually create a live mask, which you can then change um, with those sliders. <clears throat> a much, much simpler way of creating it. And if we want to um, maybe, uh, let's have a look what happens with the sky. Uh, let's turn the sky back on. And let's drag that mask up here and see what happens if I use that for the sky instead. All right, pretty weird and wacky, isn't it? But essentially, you could, um, depending on how you wanted to uh, construct your mask, uh, you can then uh, play around with, you know, let's select that one. That might work a bit better. Um, you can then play around with, um, with your luminosity masking that way, a much simpler way. Because you're then using the one panel for the whole, for the whole mm -hmm. thing. So with masking, uh, we've got the ability up here with uh, select. I can actually select by color range, right? So I could say, um, give me everything that's blue, all right? And you can see what the mask has done for blues. Um, give me everything that's red. You can see what it's done for reds and magentas, or you can actually use the sample color picker, all right? So I can come along here with my color picking and I can say, give me a mask where everything is that shade. All right, so you can see the mask that's popped up. I can say, yep, I like that. I can put that in a, uh, say, a brightness and, uh, and contrast layer. Uh, and then, so I'll turn the other one off just so it doesn't confuse things. Um, and then I can adjust the brightness and darkness of just those colors I selected. Mm. All right, so I can do a mask by color. I can do a mask by luminosity. So, so you then got because you might have dark blues and light yellows, you can do a luminosity for one and a color selection for the other, but you end up uh, being able to create the mask where you can have the subtlety um, of, uh, of effect on the image. Yep. So this is where everyone glazes over. This is the sort of stuff you just file away for, for information. <laughs> <laughs> and then go back to your video <laughs> when you want to do uh, it. And at, and at some stage in the future, you will pull it out and you say, oh, now it all clicks. But, <laughs> but so essentially the, uh, the idea is that, um, so instead of me, um, uh, uh, so let's just hide all these. Let's, uh, what shall we do? Oh, we get rid of them all. We don't need them. Um, or let me put them in a group just to get rid of them all. All right, so let's get rid of all of those. So um, the basic, so the basic things I can do. So if I turn up to my Photoshop, um, I can say uh, I turn up with a, a lightness, brightness, and contrast um, slider, and I've got a global adjustment. All right, so I can muck around with with my global adjustment. Um, I can invert the mask. I can go B for brush, and then the changes that I'm going to make uh, sort of apply to you know, everything under the brush, all right? I've got no way of picking out the mauves or the blues or the yellows and treating them differently. So I just get one global adjustment that I can brush in and that the only subtlety I've got is the, um, the hardness of my brush, the opacity uh, of uh, the paint that's being applied by the brush um, and uh, my adeptness with, a, with the brush to be able to come in and I can brush little areas and, you know, I can work my way around the picture and I can do some adjustments, but um, you can see uh, with the mask that's here um, that it's a pretty general and average approach of brushing information on, all right? So I can either do it in a general painterly way um, or I can uh, do it in a more controlled way and the controlled way is the mask, all right? So uh, the same with these, what I, what I can do is that I can um, uh, 
No, I can come up here to my select color range, come across to, uh, so let's go for shadows. It's created me a shadow um, uh, mask. You can see that what's white is darkest, right? I click OK. Um, that is now being put in my brightness and darkness layer instead. Um, and I can uh, effectively, uh, using the slider, I can change the uh, brightness and darkness using the slider, but I'm much more controlled because I'm only moving the things that are light and dark, not all the stuff in between. Right? So it's just a matter of control, of subtlety. Um, now, the, the other little thing I wanted to show you um, to get a bit more sense of this is the histogram. Right? So at the moment, um, if we turn these guys off, um, you can see the picture as it sits, uh, we've got black on the left, we've got <laughs> white on the right. So if I break this up to sort of, you know, that bit is darks, this bit in the middle is uh, mid-tones and the bit on the right is lights. That's the distribution through uh, the picture of everything, lights, um, mid-tones and darks. So if I, um, let's go and create with an action one of the other ones. So if I do a lights um, mask, you can see, uh, we'll turn that off. So I can see that what it's done is, it's, is that the histogram for the mask uh, is only the right-hand side of the picture. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's all it's affecting. And if I do the, the darks one, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 All right, let's put it in a curves layer. Yeah. Cool. There we go. All right, so you can see that um, the histogram, the, the mask is, is pinched that bit of the histogram, just the left-hand side. So, so effectively what, what the luminosity masks do is they take your whole histogram and cut it up into slices. So that then you can own, then the effect that you are giving the image is just for that section of the histogram. Huh? That's another way of looking at it. I've got a silly question, Tim. Yep. The panel where you find actions, that one on the right hand side next to the histogram one. Yep. How do you bring that one up? The actions one? Yeah, well, no. Yeah. No, right, no, so, I know so that. Up, that up whole panel that's got color swatches, whatever, whatever. Ah, okay. You go up into window and then you'll slide down to actions and then that'll pop up all the actions. Right, but you've got that actions as... as it's because he's of... got a tick on it, Rog. So if Tim opens up window again, Tim, just yeah. click on window. Just click on window and then you can see that that list there has some ticks on them. Yeah, the ones yeah. that have ticks are the ones that are opened up on the right. Yeah, yeah that one there. That one allows you to add or, um, well, what's that doing? You can, you can physically drag them too, Rog. You can yeah, yeah, but that allows you to choose. Grab this one, one and come and put it over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. Huh? And you can pull up history one and things like that. Yeah, so that's, that's right. yeah, so that's in the window. Yeah, okay. In I'm windows. Yeah. Window. All right. Now let me um, let me give you a couple of um, websites. Um, so this is our friend uh, Jared Castang. As I say, we did the trip to Iceland with him back in 2016. So Jared's a well, he's a young man compared to me these days. So he hasn't yet hit 40. Um, got a younger family and he runs a terrific photo tour. I think um, there's a couple of people have been on them. So Rick, I think, has been on one. Um, but um, they're pretty uh, they're pretty intense because they're nonstop. So you go for your five days and you, you're absolutely exhausted at the end of the five days. Uh, but he shows you, if you're going to a place, he'll show you absolutely everything. Um, so our workshop's a little bit uh, differently um, uh, sort of formatted where we take our time. So we might, we'll see less than half of what we see, but we take our time and we're not exhausted at the end of it. But if you want a, a whirlwind tour of a place, then Jared's the man to see and he's well-priced. 
Um, so if you go to his website um, up there, which you can see, jaredcastang.com, um, then he has um, for, uh, for us, because he can't generally access it, uh, he's set up this, um, uh, this download section. And um, because uh, everyone coming along is so nice, uh, we've got access to these two lots of actions. So, so the one at the top is um, the, the uh, sorry, the one at the bottom is the luminosity uh, masks. And the one at the top is the sharpening for web action. Um, so if you go to Jared's uh, site, so it's jaredcastang.com slash downloads, then for free, you can download the actions, uh, the, uh, the web sharpening action and the luminosity mask action. And um, I'll quickly show you uh, the sharpening for web action. And then you can see uh, what that does and how it does it. So essentially what, what you will do is you will, um, you will download uh, those files. And then uh, with the action panel open, if you click on the little three bars, he's got a little bit at the bottom, he'll explain this to you if you miss it. But if um, you click on the little three bars and you can uh, load an action. All right, so if you hit load action, you then go to where you've downloaded it, click on that, load down the bottom right, and the action will um, be put into the action panel. And you'll get something like down at the bottom where it says Jared Castang, and it'll probably come um, closed. Uh, the folders will probably be closed. Um, and when you get to, get to those, if you just click the down arrow, then that'll open up the, lum the uh, luminosity one. And if you hit the down arrow, it'll open up the uh, sharpen for web actions. All right. So, so if you want to try playing with the traditional um, luminosity masks, here's your perfect opportunity. Some actions that have been written, you can just run them. So to run the action, you just highlight the action and click the go button, the little um, uh, arrow, the right arrow one, and that'll actually run the action. So if I, uh, for instance, on this one, if I just ran the... Uh, uh, let's just run the lights action. You can see what happens is that it puts uh, uh, this uh, over on the right. You run it so you can't actually open it. So usually with the actions, you can actually open them and see all the functions that uh, that happens that he's recorded. But these ones are, uh, he's, uh, he's concealed his secret uh, in the action. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's the the, sharp, the luminosity one. And then there's the sharpen for web. So let me just um, quickly show you uh, that one. We'll go back to Razorback range. So at the moment, uh, this is a, a 98 megabyte file. All right, so if I go and inquire it, so if I go to image, uh, image size, so it's uh, 7,828 pixels wide and 4,403 high and it's 98.6 megabytes. So usually um, to post on the internet um, so that people can't do much with it, you wanna get down to around uh, 900 pixels, all right? And you wanna get down to around a megabyte in size. And then, um, then it, uh, the purpose of that is that it will present quite well on social media and present well on your iPhone and do all those sorts of things. But if someone wants to copy your file, uh, they can't go and then take it off to the printer and print, uh, you know, a, a 98 megabyte file. Oh. So um, with the actions, I can come down here to, um, uh, to Jared's actions here. So let me just widen that out a bit. Uh, so there's an action here, sharpen for web, a horizontal dimension of 1,000 pixels or a vertical dimension of 900 pixels, or I can actually define in the third one what sizes I want. So I tend to, in the landscape ones, um, uh, 1,000 wide or 900 wide is sort of neither here nor here, there. So let's pick the 900 vertical. I highlight it. I do the run function. And then uh, you can see on the right-hand side all the things it's doing. So, so what it does is that it, um, uh, it, there's a series of things it does. It sharpens the image. It reduces it. It use all, uses all sorts of, um, uh, there's about five or six different actions that follow. Um, so if I then go and inquire of the image, uh, image size. So it's now 1600 uh, pixels wide, 900 high. It's now gone from 300 um, 
a DPI down to 72, and it's four megabytes. All right. So um, when you look on the screen here, you wouldn't tell, but all the details are gone out of it. So if I still think it's, it's uh, a bit too big, um, I can then uh, 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 manually change it. So I can go up to um, File, Export, and I can go Export As. And then this gives me the ability to then change the pixels and also the quality. And on the left-hand side, you can see I've got the size. All right, so I might say, well, I'm giving them nothing. So let's mm -hmm. make it 900 pixels wide. That'll reduce it down to 900 by 500 pixels, and it's down to 494 kilobytes. All right? I can then export that. I can then, and the export in this uh, saves it as a JPEG. All right, so I can choose a spot to save it. On the last imagery, down in webinars, today's webinar, and I'll say it. Uh, I'll call it Razorback Web. All right, save it there. All right, so if I go down to Razorback Web, there it is. And um, if I go to Properties, File Info, um, which is not showing me anything, Gives me the size, 72 DPI, um, but uh, I know because I did it previously, that it's about 450 uh, uh, kilobytes. So I now have something that um, I can happily share on social media um, and I can uh, uh, be confident that if someone wants to um, blow it up, then it's going to be quite pixelated. All right? And they, they're not going to be able to do much with it. So but apart from that, also saves a lot of space for you. So, um, so when you're uh, when you uh, you're doing that, then it's uh, saved you that uh, trouble. Um, if you are also at uh, Camera Club uh, and uh, doing this, then this the file export function is also a great way to get your file the right size for Camera Club. All right, so if you've got the requirement, which some people, camera clubs have, where it's 1920 pixels by 1080 high, um, and it's got to be less than two megabytes, then look at that. We've got our JPEG um, at the right size, and we've got it less than two megabytes. Um, if, the, if you're bigger than two megabytes, or you need to be smaller, then you can reduce the quality of the JPEG, and you can you can then reduce, so the size doesn't change, but the the uh, the quality reduces, so it reduces the um, uh, the megabyte size of the image, not the physical size of it, just by changing the quality. So that's another way that you can actually um, export uh, to produce those files for, for a camera club where you've got a size uh, restriction. So you can do that in that export as. Yeah. So there we go. Did you shoot that as a panorama or? Just that was just one shot from your lens. Oh uh, no, that's uh, that's about six shots. Yeah, but that, that, it was six shots. But it, you started at one point four, so you changed the f stop, but you didn't do a pan with it. All right. So if I go to, um, uh, I'll show you the original files. We can do um, uh, how you set up. Um, storage facilities too at some stage if you're interested. Uh, we're in Australia, we're in South Australia, we're in Flinders Rangers 2020, and I just happen to know that it was on the 17th, the 11th, no, wrong one. 18th, the 11th, and it was Razorback Sunrise. And here are all my uh, images, Rog. Across the bottom. Um, Ah, so you did, oh, no, you didn't pan, though, did you? Yeah, I sat it on the tripod and just moved the tripod around. All right, so I did a couple. Um, oh, right, okay. This is one which... Um, when you said you moved the tripod, you mean the top, the head yeah, of the tripod? Yeah, just right? the head. So yeah. kept, the, kept the horizontal lock on. Yeah. So the one I used, I think, is this one, right? 
mm. you can see there, they're, they're the uh, they're the shots in between. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're all the ones that we stitched together. So when I stitched them all together for the first image, it was over 1.4 gigabytes or something. <laughs> so um, uh, so you can then decide what you uh, what you want to do uh, with them. Yeah, yeah. And a little bit of warp to pull up the roads too, didn't you? To lift up, to make the roads more. Yeah, I was going to say mounted. that would have been tricky. Uh, we, can, we can do a separate session on that, Roger. <laughs> 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 so what do we got here? Let me just have a quick look. I could quickly stitch a couple and then I can show you what happens. So if people are interested, uh, hang for two seconds. Um, let me... Uh, Let's go for the vertical ones. Yeah, I was going to say, you had to go to the vertical to get uh, uh, enough height in the image. Okay, this one here. You got a lot of shots in from four o'clock yeah. in the morning. <clears throat> All right, so let me uh, I'll select that one. <clears throat> Shift. Uh, come across to that one, say. They're my uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I, I actually I'll come up to tools, uh, Photoshop, um, and I'll go photo merge, and I'll do it as an auto. And I'll go away and think about it for a little bit. It loads them all in, and then chooses the bits and stitches them all together. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks pretty dreary there. <laughs> Look at my little, it's, it, it's so much processing that it's uh, affecting the audio. Okay. Almost there, it's loaded all six. And then suddenly it's going to appear all twisted and distorted, and then we've got to do something with it. No, that's going to be interesting. I like the sky the way it is. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it was a very... Um, it was really quite luminous. So this is still about half an hour before sunrise. And uh, just the wow. quality of the light that was washing over it was uh, uh, the whole place just started to glow because it's got that red soil and the reds and the golds and they were all just starting to glow even before the sun got in it. So just being there was um, was fantastic, just watching it all happen, let alone catching it with a camera. Oh. So it does a, uh, it does a reasonable job. Um, so... You can see there where the adjustments have happened on the side, but what I can do uh, now, so how big is all of this? All right, so that's 1.12 gigabytes. All right. mm. So um, let me, uh, what I'll probably do now, if I'm happy with all that, um, I will merge all the layers. So I'll flatten the image, and just make it into one, and that's taking it back to 287 megabytes from 1.12 gigabytes, all right? just because it's merged all that information. Mm. Um, and then uh, the next thing I'll do, I'll duplicate it at Control J, and then I'll go up to um, Edit, Transform, Warp. And this is where you can then muck around with uh, what the road's doing. So I can grab, grab these control points, and I can muck around with uh, twisting and warping uh, what's in the picture, what's not in the picture, uh, getting the sky to fill like an... Uh, stretch the mountains up a little bit to accommodate for what's up the top. So uh, physically, it, it's a bit like rolling dough, all right? So you can actually stretch it and move it and and uh, because it's malleable at this stage. So you can see there where I've um, mm -hmm. where I've sort of pulled, pulled it down in the foreground just to fill the foreground with the road. Got the twist as it runs around and you can then play around with, uh, with, uh, with it where it is. You can also grab the middle of the picture and grab, you know, you can move the picture up and around and decide, you know, give it a bit of a belly wobble um, mm. and then uh, sort of come up with a, with a nice kind of composition just by uh, doing the 
warp and stretch before you even start. Mm. So, um, and that, that's kind of the beginning point of, uh, of where you start playing with it. A whole new uh, Zoom course. <laughs> well, I think that's that's probably that's probably enough for people's uh, way matter tonight. I think it's full. Yeah, I think there's a bit of overload there tonight. <laughs> well, you didn't <laughs> lose many. It's, it's one of those things. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you just got to jump in, get completely saturated and immersed, and then yeah. jump back out, dry yourself down, and then have a rethink about what you just went through, because it's mm. the only way to uh, to to come to grips with it. But I think the takeaway um, is that luminosity masks are for very subtle adjustments um, and for other things. So the luminosity masks are actually more fun for doing things like when we're blending the sky. Um, You can also apply solid color with the luminosity mask. So if you want to, for instance, make all your highlights uh, tipped with golden light, you can then go and put a solid golden light over the whole picture, then come and put your luminosity mask on the top to delete it. And then all your little highlights will be tipped with yellow. All right. So you can actually use them for, uh, you can use it for, um, yeah, a just more, much more selective um, tool for uh, adjusting uh, within Photoshop. So. Mm-hmm.